Hello friends, I am Dr. Prabodh Halde. I am President-Elect of AFST CF Terra Mysore. I will be taking a presentation on GMP, GHP and FSMS. As you are aware, Shri Gandhi has said, if we want to see the change, first we have to see and you have to act yourself. What I am going to cover in next 30 minutes so about Indian food industry, FSMS, GMP, GHP, HSCCP, ISO 22000 and way forward. Friends, India is an amazing country. India, population of the India is closely 130 crore. And we are the biggest producer of agricultural raw material. As per our ex-president, Dr. APG Abdul Kalam, he said that India will be the world power in food and agriculture by 2020. And that is going to be true. Why so? Because India has a diverse agroclimatic zones. India is the only country where you can get round the year sunshine in one of the corners. India is the only country where India can produce papita to orange from pineapple to apple. No other country in the world can produce so diverse various agro or fruits vegetable. We also have a vast pool of skilled manpower which they are involved in research and extension work. These are the advantages of India. When you see the production of Indian various agricultural produced on the world map, on most of the commodities, we are either number one or number two. Look at this slide. The milk production is, we are number one. Pulses, we are number one. And tea, we are number one. Every though, every state has a lot of produced and they are producing in agricultural commodity number one. But when it comes to the processing, we are very low. When it comes to the food processing per se, there are various sectors. So those sectors are fruits vegetable, dairy, meat product, marine, agro processing, grain processing, oils and fat, beer and alcohol, consumer product like biscuits, snacks and those and health supplement. The total turnover of the food processing industry per se is about 12 lakhs crore. As I said earlier, the problem with Indian agricultural processing is that our number processing numbers are far below. Like USA and Malaysia, they are above 80%. We are merely below 5%. So there is a huge requirement and there is a huge scope for Indian food processing. Coming back to the FSMS, food safety management system is a continual activity. It is not a stationary event. It is a continual journey. So, if I'm a, I have to comply with the basic food safety regulations, I am once I am a license holder, I have to comply with the basic regulation. It starts with the basic regulation. Then it goes into the GMP and GHP and Schedule 4, which are the prerequisite. Then one can go for HSCP or ISO 22000. And then that individual FBO have to take it for continual improvement at the newer height. And ultimate aim is a consumer safety. Now let's look at a prerequisite GMP and GHP. Good hygienic practices. It's called as a GHP. The word GHP has been derived by Codex Elementarius Commission. And the Codex has been created in 1963 by a combination of FAO and WHO. They have given a code of practices as what code of practices the industry should follow, what are the code of practices under good hygienic practices, it's called the GHP. There are basic eight requirement of GHP as the slides is showing, primary production, establishment design and facility, control of operation, establishment maintenance and sanitation, establishment personal hygiene, transportation, product information and consumer awareness and training. These are the eight basic GHP requirement and every FBO food business operator needs to meet those requirement. Look at the international scenario for key element of FSMS. On the certification side, there are HACCP, ISO 22000 and FSSC 22000, which includes prerequisite like GMP GHP, HACCP of codex, quality management system which is called QMS, statute requirement of the element like or act like 
FSSA and communication of those. These are the key element of FSMS. Now we will see the linkage of FSMS to FSSA. If you see the FSSA Act, it has defined a food safety management system means the adoption of good manufacturing practices, good hygienic practices, hazard analysis, critical control point and such other practices as may be specified by regulation. So it is clear the FSSA Act has defined the FSMS means GMP, GHP and critical control point in line with HACCP. So do, these are the requirement of FSMS along with the Schedule 4. So if you look at this slide, the FSMS program based on the FSSA includes Schedule 4 requirement and FSMS plan which will give the critical control point. So we have Schedule 4 which includes the checklist of Schedule 4 which is based on GMP and GHP and FSMS plan which includes flowchart, hazard and control points, critical limit for the monitoring, corrective action and responsibility the person who will be doing it and record keeping. So to summarize FSMS plan includes schedule 4 compliance and FSMS plan. You might be aware about the schedule 4 requirements. Schedule 4 requirements are based on GMP and GHP. There are 12 requirements which states as location and surrounding, layout and design, equipment, facilities, food operation and control, management and supervision, food testing, facilities, audit and documentation and record keeping, sanitation and maintenance of the establishment, premises, personal hygiene, product information and consumer awareness and training. Basically, these requirements of the Schedule 4s are taken as it is from GMP and GHP. Indian food industries are divided on two. One is manufacturing and one is a service industry. Now this FSMS is applicable for both the industry which is manufacturing and service. Manufacturing means the production units. It could be PT manufacturer, it could be a small manufacturer, it could be a big manufacturer. On coming to the service industry, it could be a catering industry, it could be the hotel industry, it could be the transportation. But the FSMS requirement will be the different for both the categories. So we have small manufacturer, we have medium manufacturer, we have large manufacturing. And on the services, we have small caterer, we have a small vending operator and we have a big hotels. But the FSMS requirement, the principles will be the same, but the requirements will be the different. Now let's see how it is applicable. The primary production, which are the prerequisites about how the environment about our location of the and surrounding of the area where the food unit is placed. Then the design of the unit has to be in accordance with the GMP and GHP. Like if it is a dairy, all the surface which is coming into contact with the milk should be made SS. So these are the requirements. It's called as a design and facilities. The water logging should not be there. So the water there has to be slope. So these are the requirements. The facility like air, water, steam and lightning should be adequately available. These are the few pictures you will get a clarity how the unit should look like. So the people are wearing the head gloves, there is an apron and also there is a pesto flash in the facility. Control of operation means the raw material and the finished product. The movement of the raw material and the finished product should be separate because there should not be any cross contamination. Look at the maintenance of equipment. A person who is doing a maintenance, he needs to keep the equipment also in the clean condition. All the materials whatever he is using should be the food safe material. Otherwise, there is a contamination coming from the various maintenance activity. A storage has to be properly kept. You look into this diagram and picture, there are the tags. The bins are available which are kept on the pallets. They are not directly contacted with the floor. They are properly maintained. There is a GMP requirement and also the FIFO is being maintained first in, first out. Pesto flash has been mounted properly on the wall to kill the paste. There is a rodent control which is called as a paste control to trap the rodents. So the in the diagram you will see that there are two rodent controls traps are available so the rat will get trapped in this rat trap. Sanitation is most important and in India generally people actually take the shortcuts and they don't clean their hands. Sanitation is a very key activity for entering into the production 
and for that 70% isopropyl alcohol is being used to kill the microbes and to make your hand clean. Establishment personal hygiene it is very very important. All the people working in a manufacturing unit, all the industry of the catering also need to have a health status report, illness reporting, personal cleanliness. These are the very very important because person can be a carrier of the various disease to the food. So it is very very important. All the transportation of the material, a finished good or raw material needs to be maintained as per the requirement. So if you are transporting ice cream, the temperature of the vehicle to be maintained below 4 degree, otherwise ice cream will melt. If you are transporting onion, it cannot be clubbed with the apple. So these are the basic requirement of the transportation. So these are the how to load the containers, how to keep the gap between the two crates and how to make the air circulation as per the requirement is also been given in the schedule 4. Product information and consumer awareness is the most important part because the product, whatever you are going to sell, consumer should be aware about it. So there has to be the label and all the information to be maintained on the label like consumer contact number, manufacturing date, manufacturing batch code and address and etc. To keep the activity in accordance with the regulation, the training is most important. The way I am giving you a training, the same training has to be conducted for all the employees engaged in food business operation. And training should be continual and there also should be effective review to see that the training is effective. These are the GHP requirement and now we will see what are the GMP requirement. Principally both are same. And GMP got total 6 requirement which are in line with the schedule 4 which includes personal hygiene, plant and ground, sanitary operation, equipment and utensils, process controls, warehousing and distribution. Again, whatever you have seen earlier, they are in the same line with the principles. Now we will look into the HACCP and ISO 22000. You must have heard about HACCP. It's called as Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. What is Hazard? Hazard is something which is has a potential to make a food ill for the consumer. So HACCP is the process for identification of the hazard which gives how the hazard is and how to control that hazard through a particular process called critical control point. We will see in the detail. One more important thing, hazard analysis is, is not actually is a preventive mechanism is not a corrective mechanism. For example, if I am adopting a HACCP principle to the milk, it will prevent somebody will not have a poisoning from that milk. However, once the milk is spoiled, it cannot take it back to the milk. So if the milk is curdled, I cannot take back that milk to the milk in the liquid state because of the HACCP. So it is a preventive mechanism, not the corrective mechanism. As I said earlier, HACCP is a system which identifies the hazard, evaluates the hazard and controls the hazard which are significant for food safety. In this slide, the history of the HACCP has been given but uh, you can read the slide. The NASA has established the first HACCP principle when they wanted to send the astronauts to the moon in way back in 1959. The Pillsbury, the general uh, foods, GM foods, they have given the HACCP program saying that after eating those food, the astronauts will not have any problem. However, it took 1995 to make HACCP for the industry. So it took closely some 20 years so. As I said, HACCP is a preventive approach. It is not a zero risk system. It doesn't give a guarantee that after adopting HACCP, there is no food poisoning. It is only a prevention. However, it minimizes the risk of food safety hazards or food poisoning and it focuses on food safety and not on quality. Some people have a myth that HACCP will increase or improve the quality. No, it will improve the food safety, not the quality. What is the hazard? Basically, hazard is a biological, chemical or physical agent which has a potential to cause the adverse health effect. Hazard analysis is a process of collecting, evaluating the information on hazard which is leading because of those hazards, how it will impact on the food safety. So this is the process to analyze the hazard, is the hazard analysis process. 
and critical control point is the point or is the step or is a situation where all the activities are carried out or conditions which can have an influence on the safety of the product and controlling or exercising a control on those conditions. So for example, we have a milk and we know that milk have hazard of a microorganisms. Milk can be spoiled with the bacteria. So critical control point is a point or is a process is like a boiling. It controls the microorganisms by killing the microorganisms at particular one temperature. So it is called as a critical control point. It's a process which eliminates the hazard. So that point is a very, very critical to the operation. Thus it's called as a critical control point. As I said, biological, chemical and physical hazards. Example of biological hazard is a bacteria. Chemical hazard is a preservatives, color or additives which are not allowed. Physical hazards are glasses, stones, pins, or metals they can go into the food and harm the consumer these are the examples of physical hazard you can look into the slide and there are various physical hazards like hair stone you have seen so many examples while drinking your favorite soft drink you have found the hair or you found the stone or you have found something physical hazard which should not have been there so while doing a pasteurization there could be a chances the metal can come into the product visible microbiological hazards like flies, weevils, which are commonly available when you eat the food outside, you generally see these kind of hazards. They could be dangerous, sometimes they are not dangerous. Then there are invisible microbiological hazards like bacteria which can spoil the food, yeast, protozoa, molds and viruses. They are not visible by the naked eyes, however, they are dangerous. We need to remove those. Then there are chemicals in the food which are like pesticide residue, veterinary drugs, non-permissible additives, excessive permissible additives limit, adulterants and cleaning chemicals. In the milk, generally they add caustic soda to keep the milk shelf life more and which is also a chemical hazard. However, the entire system of the HACCP, though it is defining the hazard and eliminating the hazard, however, the purpose of the HACCP is to understand the risk. How risk is defined is hazard into the exposure. In this slide, you will see that the boy is crossing the road and the cars are coming. The boy is not looking at the car. So there is a probability that a car which is a hazard can kill the boy because it, they are coming in the very high speed. So the risk is very high because the probability of occurrence of that hazard is very high. In other diagram, the girls are standing in a actually car parking zone, car is a hazard, however, the exposure of that hazard is very less because they are in the park condition and the overall the risk is low. So this is the risk profile in both the diagrams. Once the risk is identified, once the characterization of the risk is actually calculated by identification of the hazard and characterization of the hazard and doing the exposure assessment, then the one can do the risk characterization on 1 to 5 scale, 1 to 25 scale, 1 is low and 25 is highest. There are few methods where the critical control point or the HACCP you can control or eliminate the hazard. The pasteurization is one of the examples which can kill the microbes by proper heating and keeping the time and temperature and which is being employed in milk or dairy industry. Friends, hazard can come to our food at various stages. When we eat the food, the food comes from the farm. So it is called as a safe farm to fork approach. How it can come from the farm? It can come from the farm through the transportation, to the landfill, to the industry, to the crop contamination, during processing and during retailing. It can come at any stage. So the proper approach of the HACCP and FSMS is taking a stock of the situation and controlling the hazard or eliminating the hazard at each value added stage. The last portion of the presentation is on ISO 22000 or FSCC 22000. What actually this ISO 22000 have done, they have combined the HACCP system along with the quality management systems and interacted with both the element together and given ISO 22000. We will see which are the requirement of the ISO 22000 system. It includes the point number four, food safety management system which is about HACCP 
and also included a part of the quality management system like management responsibility, resource management, planning and realization of the safe product and validation, which are the requirement of QMS. So basically, ISO 22000 or FSSC 22000 is nothing but a marrying of HACCP and quality management system. With this, we have finished the three aspects of today's presentation. One is prerequisite like GMP, GHP, HACCP and ISO 22000. Thank you. <music>